To professionally test Canon's new 600EX RT speedlights, I wanted a location that would challenge the radio-based communications and demand that I color match my daylight balance speedlights with tungsten-style architectural fixtures. The newly refurbished Elks Theater offered the perfect venue and a pair of beautiful ballerinas completed the scene. Just as a good theatrical lighting designer might do, I began by establishing a strong backlight. By working in the group mode, I was able to assign the C group to a pair of 600EX speedlights. Before rigging these speedlights, I zoomed both to the newly available 200mm setting to provide a spotlight effect. With the speedlights set to be slaves in the group mode, and Canon's new tungsten filter holder in place, I hung both units from a repurposed seamless paper backing support. Two more stands were fitted with their own 600EX speedlights. One unit was set to the A group and the other to group B. Both floor units were initially set to ETTL mode and my C group backlights were set to manual mode with their power dramatically reduced. I seldom choose to shoot with a speed light in the hot shoe, so I equipped my 5D Mark III with a new STE3 RT transmitter. This compact device allows me to wirelessly control up to five groups individually. ETTL is great when used with flashes that illuminate the camera side of the subject, but can be inconsistent when used as a backlight or kicker. I almost always set my backlights to manual mode for maximum consistency. Once Morgan was in her wardrobe, I invited her on stage for a quick test shot. Like many pros, I prefer to travel light, so I decided to use a practical and compact shoot-through umbrella. I prefer a backlight look, so I placed my A-Group 600EX a little bit behind the dancer. A quick test shot revealed that the deep background was rather dark and grim, so I snatched up my B-Unit and positioned it at the very back of the theater. With the reflector properly flooded, the distant walls came to life. To recap, I placed my B group at the back of the audience, assigned the C group to my backlight bridge, and placed my umbrella equipped key light in the group A. We kept the house lights up so that the video cameras could adequately record the scene. The deeply placed background light fired with unerring consistency and added a much appreciated sense of depth to the scene. My first samples revealed that everything was working beautifully. The ETTL-based illumination from the umbrella looked gorgeous. By manually dialing down the C-group to a very subtle level of illumination, I was able to get good separation between the girl and her background. My next setup featured Savannah. The idea was to show a dancer relaxing backstage immediately after her performance. To that end, we worked just off stage in an area that was home to the mechanical controls for the curtains. Once again, my ETTL controlled A group in a shoot through umbrella provided my key light. A second 600EXRT, this one in the C group and set to manual mode, had its reflector zoomed out to 24mm and was placed deeply in the background and aimed towards the ceiling. My A group in ETTL mode with its ratio control activated, was assigned to the shoot-through umbrella. B group, also in ETTL mode with ratio control, was bounced off of the stage right wall. I played with different ratios and liked a 6 to 1 ratio in favor of my key light. I can fine tune my speed light settings directly from my 5D Mark III, but I still put in my miles scampering around to adjust the angle and location of each unit. Before this setup was complete, I added one more 600EX which I assigned to the D group. 
Since I had the help of young assistant Joe, this speed light was set to manual mode, zoomed to 200 millimeter and used as a handheld accent light from camera right. After a few test shots, I decided to reposition my key light for a better wrap. After capturing a few frames with Joe's handheld speed light, subtly accenting Savannah from frame right, its manual output setting was set to a minimum, I sent my young helper to stand in the balcony seats located on the other side of the wall directly behind Savannah. Keeping Joe's handheld unit set to 200 millimeter and instructing her to aim it at the balcony boxes on the opposite wall, I dramatically increased the power of her handheld D group up to one half power so it could reach the far side of the stage. That little STE3 RT transmitter really works. It can even talk through walls. Approaching the end of my very first shoot with Canon's new radio-based speedlight system, I was very impressed with the consistency of communication between the master and slave units. Instant review on the LCD combined with easy adjustment of each and every speedlight in the setup allowed me to quickly create a series of images that were subtle and subtly different. If I wanted to manually make the distant lights brighter, I could do so instantly. If I wanted to add on exposure compensation to any of my ETTL controlled units, it could happen in a flash. If I wanted to manipulate the ratio between my key and fill lights, it was only a few button pushes away. I'd call this an excellent start to my adventures with the 600EX RT speedlight system. Stay tuned.